What is up guys, Sharpen here, and I know what you're gonna say. Halloween is a month away. Well, animation is a process that takes a lot of time, so knowing all these things earlier can help you finish your animation on time. So we're doing this tutorial today. Before I start, I want to give a shout out to Candy for making me this awesome shirt as a birthday present. I mean, this guy's shoes, we got my logo on it right there, see? And it says, live in the frame, because I do animation. It's perfect. Thank you, Candy. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can carve your own pumpkin. Note, I will not include a download link, because the whole point for you is to carve your own pumpkin, just like in Halloween. I'm trying to raise the Halloween spirit. This is what we're doing today, and uh, I hope you guys will like it. So subscribe if you haven't already, or leave a comment for the next tutorial. And with that on the side, let's get on the tutorial. So we're making this pumpkin here. Now, as you see, it looks pretty pumpkin-like. It's got a 3D extrusions and a nice glowing candle on the inside. It's three-dimensional. It's not flat, but those cubes over here, like this is this is 3D, right? It's 3D, it's the extrusion system. So if I open this up, you see a lot of different components, and this is what we're gonna do. So I wanna close my animator for now. I want you to open your my animator folder, and since I'm gonna use the new version of my animator for this, I'm gonna open the new one data, Minecraft, and you see this WinRAR zip file. So open this up with WinRAR Archiver. I learned how to pronounce it this time. And open up Assets, Minecraft, and Textures, Block, and you have a bunch of these here. So search for Pumpkin Side and Pumpkin Top. Select them and drag them on your desktop or anywhere you want. They should still remain in this folder. You cannot delete them from the RAR file. They need to be in here. Just copy them on your desktop, right here. Then, I want to use an item sheet, which I have right here. So these are my item sheets. And I want to use the item sheet 16 by 16, like the regular item sheet. The download link for all the item sheets is gonna be in the description for you to download your own item sheets and test stuff out with them. Open the item sheets with any kind of program that supports layers and transparency. I'm using paint.net and honestly, it's very great if you wanna do stuff like this. You don't need Photoshop or anything super advanced as long as it has transparency and layers. Paint.net is perfect. It's free and the download link will be in the description as well. If you zoom in on here, you can see a lot of squares and that's how the item sheet looks like. Item sheet. I said shit by mistake. I want you to copy one of the images, just copy it. Make a new layer here so we don't draw on the background layer, but you draw on layer two and simply paste it here. <laughs> This is your pumpkin side thing. One thing we want to do right now is select this to subtract your selection. So anything you select now will get subtracted from the main selection. So if I do this, see, I subtract things. Now I want to subtract the middle circle, so I only select the outline. Now press delete. Now I have this. Sorry if I'm going too fast, you can pause the video and rewatch it again. Now go to the desktop, simply select the squares and delete the squares because you don't want the brackets to be inside your item. Copy the pumpkin top texture, select your layer 2, paste it here. Now I want to move the pumpkin top here, as you see I can move it around, move it on the second square, so it overlaps the second square. Uh, do what we did before, so subtract the middle area and simply delete, so now I have the pumpkin top here as well. Go to background and delete the brackets, so now you have these two textures. If you want the face now, you can simply select the first one. Remember, you have to select the outlines too, copy it, paste it, and drag it on the third square. As you see, it fits in nicely. Now again, go to the background and press delete to get rid of the brackets. And this is it, this is all the textures you need. If you wanna do the face, select the eraser tool and uh, of course, select layer two or else you're not gonna do anything. If you were to erase anything now, you see you get semi-transparent pixels. That's gonna look very, very ugly and glitchy on your item, you do not want that. Be careful because this is a major issue in rigging. You cannot afford semi-transparent pixels because that just simply ruins your rig. What I want to do is click this, anti-aliasing anti or this thing. Click it so you have it disabled. Now if I paint over here, you see there's no semi-transparent pixels. It's a solid color. So I want to scale this down and draw a face. Like I'm going to do, this is one eye, happy pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you want to do more high quality pumpkins, you can just go to image, resize, and scale this up by twice as much. 512 in this case, you would have it best quality by default, so just select the nearest neighbor. So you keep the quality, it doesn't blur anything. So if I press OK, this image is now twice as big. Except what's different is, now if I want to draw a face, I have more space to work with. If you want a more quality face, I recommend you do that. 
but I really don't want a more quality face, so I want to scale it back down because this is just enough for me. Save this image as, I'm going to save it on my desktop, save it as Plumpkin, and uh, don't forget to change the format here from paint.net to PNG. It needs to be a PNG. Now it's gonna require, uh, click OK, now it wants you to flatten the image, flatten it, but then press Ctrl plus Z to undo this. So keep your layers. The image right here is already exported, this plumpkin item sheet thing, but you still get to keep your layers. So if you mess anything up, you can come in here and change it anytime. So you're safe. So you have your textures here. You only need this one though, the item sheet that we made. So I, I wanna minimize paint.net, don't close it because you still might need to adjust stuff. And now I'm gonna open up the new Minimator thing. I have this plumpkin thing here already, but I wanna, I wanna make a new project, call it pumpkin. Now I wanna import an item, call it side. This is the side of my pumpkin. The image it uses should be browsed and select this Plumpkin item sheet. Uh, don't change anything because we made it this way. If you want a deeper insight on how the item sheets work, click the eye in the corner for my advanced weapons tutorial because I can't explain it in there quite well. Just click OK. This is your first item. GG. Uh, change the item and select the side of the pumpkin. Now, uh, the, I want the center of my pumpkin to be in here. I want to put this in a folder. So now just click the folder icon to put stuff in the folder. Call the folder pumpkin. This is now your entire rig. Uh, now the side here should be moved 7.5 units on the Z. Duplicate it and put it on, ah, uh, put it on minus 7.5. Duplicate it again, uh, rotate it 90 degrees Put the Z on zero and put the X to minus 7.5. So as you see, the corners should meet up perfectly here because one pixel on the item is exactly 0.5 pixels in here. And um, this block is 16, so eight units in both directions. Minus, minus 0.5 is 7.5 units. So this makes a perfect shape. I did some math. Import another item, rename it top or bottom, whatever you want. Select the item sh item sheet which is already in here and uh, of course select the top thing. Uh, lock it on the pumpkin. Custom rotation point should be eight now so it's in the center and rotate it sideways like minus 90. Of course raise it up by 0 0.5 so now it's in here. Duplicate the top, put it up and I think it's 15.5 here. I wanna do something special here. Like I wanna turn this 90 degrees so I want, I want the pumpkin to be able to be open itself, so you can open the top up. So let me see, if I put the X here, no it's not the X, it's the Y. Yeah, put the rotation point to 16, uh, actually no, 15. Yeah, put it to 15, now it's in right here in the middle. Put the X backwards by 7 units, I think. Oh, minus seven. And basically what I did here is position the entire thing here, but the custom rotation point is like at the edge. So when you want to open the pumpkin, you can simply open it up like this. You can pause the video and go backwards because I know I was kind of fast at this point. Like if you don't understand, just pause it and rewatch it. Uh, now you want to add a third item, call it face. And this is the face that you drew yourself. You can draw any kind of face you want. And that's the beauty in this. Lock it on the pumpkin again, turn it 90 degrees and put it on plus 7.5. This is your main shape of the pumpkin. And we're almost done. Uh, import a cube, select the bottom face, just call it bottom. So at least you know what it is. You can rename the size to left, right, back. But I'm too lazy, so I just want to tell you the basic concept. Lock the cube onto the bottom, turn it sideways. Now, scale it down, and this is going to be your candle. So, just make a candle shape. You can put it up by 0.5, I think. Yeah, it's perfectly aligned now. Uh, just position it however you want, like this is your candle. Put the mix percent to 100, and uh, now select any color you want. I really don't know what color pumpkins are, like wax. I'm just gonna go with something like this, like this looks like a wax color. I'm not sure. Uh, duplicate the cube, lock it on itself, reset the scale or something, reset the rotation. Okay, yeah, put it 16 units up, so now it's on top of this cube, and simply scale it down a bit. Put the mix color to black, because this is your string of the candle, so look. Looks like a nice candle inside your pumpkin. Uh, one more thing now. You need a particle spawner? Yeah. Flame. Lock the flame onto the upper cube. Okay, yeah, it's in the top of the cube now, so you want to put it 16 units up, so now it's in the center of the cube. So now we have this crazy mess. Click Open Editor. First thing you want to do is click the particle 1. 
actually decrease the amount of time after spawn. So put this to two seconds. So after two seconds, the particles will automatically disappear. Click the particle one thing so it open up this, opens up this menu and click the flame one. So now it's a flame particle that will automatically disappear after two seconds. Now put this speed to zero, zero, zero. So now it's, you scale it down or so. Just move the particle spawner up. This looks like the flame is in there and it's not gonna disappear because it summons 300 particles per minute and they stay up for two seconds so by the time the particles disappear the new ones are gonna spawn so you're always gonna see this one little candle flame or you can use an item or a texture of a flame or anything you want this flame graphics cast shadows off and also this this entire cube thing uh, have it cast shadows off this entire cube and wax and flame and everything on here like this entire candle inside your pumpkin should not be casting shadows now uh, import a point light uh, lock it on a cube thing put it in the center here uh, make it glow like orange or yellow or red wait let me turn on the shading uh, actually I gotta make it nighttime so I can see anything like bam maybe make it more red or duplicate the point light have it more yellowish now another thing, like as you see here, the insides are kind of weird and funny. So I want to make, I want to import a new cube, call it insides, and invert it. Now wait, if I, if I undo the lighting so you can see what I'm doing, lock the insides onto the pumpkin, put it one up. Yes, yeah, so now it's right in here, and scale it down until you can see it covering the insides of the pumpkin. Move it slightly up so it doesn't glitch with the ground. So yeah, this is now the inside of a pumpkin. If I, if I turn on the shading now, it's, it's funny. <laughs> put the mix color to bright yellow, put it on 100%. And now what you want to do is alpha it down just a little bit. So without the insides, it looks like this, but with the, with the insides, it looks like it's shining. It's more bright and uh, lively, like there's, there's a glowing flame inside it. Sometimes your pumpkin might glitch and something like this will appear and this would ruin it. Uh, the way you fix this is click the insides and put the render depth to one or two or anything above zero or above the rest of the pumpkin. So now it's not gonna glitch at all. If you want an explanation on how this works, I have a render depth explanation video where I talk about how you can use it in your advantage. Uh, you can watch this as well so you'll learn about it because I, I don't have time to explain it in this video. Well, this obviously looks nice but select all the components of your pumpkin, go to the inherit options and select color. So now all of these will inherit color from the pumpkin. So if I increase the brightness of the pumpkin, the rest will obviously follow. So increase the brightness just a little bit so you can see it's glowing. Like look, this looks like a nice pumpkin or something. Just make it bright because there's a glowing candle inside it. It's gotta be bright, sunset or something. And the way I did with the camera is basically just import the camera and uh, Click on bloom. Now mess with the bloom settings. Do something with the bloom. Don't, please don't overreact it though. Like, bam! <laughs> There's your pumpkin. You can go even deeper and make like a rounded pumpkin, a stem or anything. Like, you can even open it up now. Wait, I want to open it up. This is your pumpkin. You can go even deeper. I made a rough explanation for you to experiment with this and uh, happy carving. This is your Halloween pumpkin. I hope you enjoyed and learned a thing or two about rigging and pumpkins, I guess. Happy carving and happy animation. Thank you for watching and stay sharp.